Hi, this is Rachel from Ray K Books, and today I'm interviewing two people, Kendara Blake and Kristen Simmons. Kendara Blake is the author of Anna Dressed in Blood, and Kristen Simmons is the author of Article 5, and the arrow glass is upcoming. Is that what it is, the arrow glass? The glass arrow. Glass arrow, almost. It's out in February, so it's out. It's, oh, okay, <laughs> it's out. And Kendara's coming out with the third, the third goddess war book. Okay, woo, third. This is a little difficult. Yeah, third one. Okay. So for those of you watching, um, if you are watching this right now, you'll see there are questions um, on the sidebar, so you can ask them, and then we'll, they will answer them. Um, but the first question. I would like to ask both of you is what book are you guys reading right now? Oh, um, <laughs> I know this is book. a harder question than I thought. <laughs> yeah, because I've got maybe four that I'm just kind of in the middle of sitting on my coffee table. So I've got um, The Iron Trial by Kathy Clare and Holly Black, and I'm the back third of that one. I'm reading a collection, a short story collection called Revenge, and I can't remember who it's by. It's by a Japanese woman. Um, I'm finishing off Caitlin R. Kiernan's collection of short stories, The Ape's Wife and Other Stories. I had just finished Rin Chupeco's The Suffering, and um, there's one other one that's out there, and it's, I'm totally blanking on it. Oh, yeah, Jason Mott, The Return. Awesome. How, are, how are you reading that many books at once? I'm totally impressed. <laughs> well, no, no, no. You don't understand. Like the Caitlin Cairn book, I've been reading it for about a year and a half. So okay. it's it's like that's just they don't leave my coffee table. Gotcha. Well, stained and abused. Gotcha. <laughs> what about you, Kristen? Um, I just finished Ice Like Fire, an arc of Ice Like Fire by Sarah Rosh. And um uh Naughty book that shall not be named. <laughs> Ooh. It's really good though. <laughs> Naughty books are the best type of book. Yeah. Like, it was good all one. for myself. You Cruise. write naughty books, don't you? What's that? You write naughty books too, don't you? Like you, you write some naughty books every once in a while? No? Can't say so? You indulge in some naughtiness. We'll just say you indulge in some naughtiness every now and again. It's okay. <laughs> Every oh, once good. in a while, I write naughty books. Yes, <laughs> under under a different name. <laughs> this one, I will say, this one was so naughty that I was on a plane and a nun sat next to me, and I had to probably <laughs> wait because I was so embarrassed to even have it open on my lap. So you have another persona, really? You have, but it's secret because you don't want people to know that you write write naughty books. I do. I do have another persona. Um, and it, I write under the name Sierra Kincaid, and it's um, their uh, erotic romance books. So actually, I have, I have a book coming out tomorrow, since we're talking about it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Erotica. That is quite a contrast <laughs> to the young adult series. Like, it's kind of like one to the other, like young adult to erotica. Well, I mean, <laughs> She writes so many books that, like, if you think about the Article 5 series and the Glass Era, there's so much action and there's so many, you know, maneuvers. And I imagine that in the erotica, there's a lot of maneuvers. And so, there's a lot of maneuvers. A lot of maneuvering. <laughs> so it's, you know, the mechanics there's a lot of, of it. There's a lot of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you had to sit next to a nun. That's great. That's great. Yeah, and so I ended up putting the book away and... Just kind of staring out the window for two hours, thinking. Mm -hmm. No, you didn't. You didn't just want to like, hey, hey, let me share this passage. With <laughs> no. you. And I couldn't. I couldn't just, you know, cover it up and look away. I was, I was positive. <laughs> that would have been we were. Would look over and see. <laughs> so, are you guys? Uh, have you guys been doing the NaNoWriMo? Oh, I think it was last month, the summer camp. I didn't know there was a summer camp, but I no, didn't know there I mean, wasn't I either. Yeah, it's like, it's not even summer, so I don't know why it's called summer camp. But basically, NaNoWriMo, 
but you don't have an actual, you can make your own word count. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well anyway, in case you haven't, uh, the second <laughs> one is every, every one has, or every author has a specific writing style. So what is your writing style and why do you write in that style? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to Kendara on this one. I mean I don't know. I mean I I think that I address you know, recurrent themes and uh, um, you know there's always violence in my work. I don't know why. Uh, there's always violence. There's always darkness. It's always a little twisted, a little disturbing. But the actual styles um, are kind of fluid because if you're if you're writing in first person, like when I wrote Anna Dressed in Blood with Kaz, it was all in his voice. So it was a completely different style than Antigodis, which is third person, you know, third person limited. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, when you're eventually, when you when you get it down, you you discover, you know, you have your own voice and you have your own way of doing things. And sometimes it goes the opposite way, and you discover that you uh, really like to use the same word too many times. Like, ah, oh, that must be my favorite word because I snuck it into this book like six times, and then you have to go through and pick out your favorite word. So, I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I would say I would say that that's kind of the same for me. I don't. Um, I think the style, the specific style of it, changes a little bit. Um, my my first series is in first person, and then I I switch in. Well, the glass arrow is also in first person, um, but it switches tense, and then um, my next books are are switching to third person. So it. it that that changes a little bit. I do love certain words, and I do use them over and over, uh, like you were saying, Kandara. Um, and I do love commas, as my I've editor. I heard about that. I tell you, I I love them. I I think that I think that a one book should be an entire sentence just with a lot of commas in it. I, I don't believe in ever stopping a thought and just continuing to go on and on and on into oblivion. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a, I'm, I think that's my style, is just uh, the run-on sentence. <laughs> nice. Nice. Great, great, great style. Yeah. I, bet your, I bet your editors love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well I, I, think, I think she's a fan. She's not a fan. <laughs> So, we have the same editor, so yeah, we we discussed the the comment thing. Mostly, like you, Kristen, have told me about the comment thing. Mel's never said anything to me like, "Oh my God, the commas!" No, that's never happened. But <laughs> I got turned from you, so it's funny when I hear you guys talk about it. Yeah, is that how you two met through the same editor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and and promoting books together at certain at different um, events. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And you just became friends after it. You're like, I'm oh, cool. Friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Many embarrassing photographs and um yeah, yeah. It's fun to, you know, you have an editor in common it's fun to terrorize her. And Kristen's great at editorial terrorizing. So <laughs> good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, do you guys make a lot of friends when you tour with other authors? Is that kind of yeah. like where you network a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's. Um, I, I would say the majority of authors um, that I've formed relationships have have been at events. Um, and now that I think of that, of course, I'm thinking of five different examples of where that's not true. <laughs> you know, another another place that I met a lot of authors was through my debut group. I um, I debuted uh, the art Article Five in 2012, and so we had a a YA debut group that we would email back and forth and stuff. So I, I met a lot of authors that way too. And that the was that's right? What's that? The apocalypses. Yes, we were the apocalypses. We still are the apocalypses. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. So, um, if you could have been the original author of any book, what would it have been and why? Hmm. Hmm. Um, I... 
Well, I, I will say that I love Mary Shelley's Frankenstein very much, and I, I wrote about that in the Article 5 series. I loved it so much. Um, and so I don't think that I ever could write something that sweeping and epic, but, uh, but sure, I would definitely slap my name on that <laughs> if I could. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> but, I mean, it's so it, it's such a beautiful book, and it explores these themes that are just really deep and powerful. Um, you know what it is to be a human, and um, living with guilt, and and all sorts of all sorts of good and evil kind of things. And um, and yeah, I I would have loved to have written that. Nice. Yeah. What about you, Kendara? Um. Well, I don't know. I mean, if I'm just gonna slap my name on something, you know, that I that I anything by um, like Milan Kundera would be would be great because then people would think I was so smart. But I'd never be able to talk about the books at length. If, if anybody ever asked me, like, oh, how did the theme of otherness come about? And you're, I'd be just like, how do you think it came about? You know, I have to do a lot of that <laughs> Tell me what it means. <laughs> so um, that might not be the best thing to slap my name on. I think they'd figure out I was a fraud pretty damn fast. Um, I don't know. Uh, I love um, the imagination of books like The Never Ending Story. Um, I'm blanking. Anybody, anytime, I have like, you can see them. I have huge friggin' shelves of books, obviously, that I love in the background. But whenever anybody asks me, you know, what one I want to write or which one's my favorite, I can't even think of the first, I can't think of anything. So, sorry. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to play a game called Would You Rather, and if people out there don't know what Would You Rather is, it is when I ask a question such as, do you like apples or oranges the most? They have to pick either apples or oranges, so it's quite easy, except this um, pertains to books. So the first one is, would you rather have one best-selling book, like like I'm talking about J.K. Rowling, best-selling book, national or worldwide fame and everything, one book, or have all your books be mediocre sellers? <laughs> um... You have to pick one? I don't know. Kendara, go. You answer. Mega bestseller. Come on. Mega yeah, bestseller. I think, I think like, probably, because then even if you don't do well after that, you can always have your name. Yeah. Or like, on I would, if I had a mega bestseller and I knew this was like the clause, like, oh, you only get one. I'd just, I'd never write under that name again, but, you know, I'd keep on writing. If all those just flop, so what? I still get to write, and I still am known for that one big mm -hmm. Harry Potter thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it would have gotten out to a lot of people, and yeah, I agree. And the next one is, would you rather read only trilogies or standalones? I'm on a standalone kick. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote a trilogy. <laughs> and then I had a moment after that was done that I thought, you know what? I think it's, I think it's standalones for me for a while. <laughs> so you're right in the middle of a trilogy. So how are you feeling about it? Well, I mean, I I love reading um, series. You know, I love the anticipation that builds when you read a series. Not even just a trilogy, but like you know, like Game of Thrones, and then or or Harry Potter, where the time in between books is like this sweet, stupid agony, where the fandom really connects and finds a voice in that void that they have to fill, where no words are there. Mm -hmm. So I really, really love that that reading experience. I think that's a special reading experience, especially now that readers are so connected via social media and we have like fan fiction and all that stuff. So I would never give up reading series, but I like if I was to name my favorite books, I would probably have to name mostly standalones. So I don't know what that means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second one. Is would you rather read only female or male authors? Um, I, I don't know that I think too much about whether an author is male or female when I read. Well, I do a little bit more now, but because I, I read a lot of things by people that I've met. 
Um, so I, I think about it a little more like that. But, uh, God, you, that's a hard force choice. Um, I don't know. Girl power? I feel like I'm probably offending a male friend by saying that. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, plus, you're an erotica author, so I, you know, like, I don't think there's any male erotica authors there out there. Should be. There should there be are. a push. There are, are for there, sure. Are there? Really? Excellent. We need wow. more male erotica. I've know? read I've read some. They're very good. Nice. Mm -hmm. What about you, Kendara? Uh, uh, I could never choose. Because like, that question, you know, you immediately think of who are the, are the authors that you can't live without. And plenty of them are male for me, so I could never, I could never just say, you know, no more, no more Milan Kundera for me. Sorry, you have a penis. I could never say that, so I, I don't know, um, I don't know, and I could never say no to, you know, Caitlin Stearman. I could never ever do that. So I don't know. That's too hard. Too hard, Rachel. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. It's so hard. <laughs> All right. Well, this one could be easier. Would you rather shop at Barnes and Noble or Amazon? Um, um, Barnes and Noble. Yeah, I like I like to touch the books. Yeah. 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 I like to walk around and you know have a physical feeling and be able to take them off the shelf and flip through them a little bit. Yeah. 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 The next one is: Would you rather all books become movies or TV shows? So instead of Hunger Games becoming a movie, if you choose TV shows, then it will have to be a TV show instead. All. So, like, there would be no more of the other. I guess movies. Yeah, I would say movies, but uh, I'm going to say TV shows just because... Um, I like going to the movies so much, and I like books that become movies, but uh, I have to pay babysitters now to go to movies, so I don't do it very often. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of TV shows. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I'd there like are some see, awesome ones. I, yeah, I'd like out. to see a little Anna Dressed in Blood uh, TV show. I'd watch it. I would, do. I would, do. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The next one is, would you rather read five books per week or five books per month? Uh, I can tell you what I do. <laughs> it's probably yeah. only less than five per month right now. <laughs> yeah. I try to read faster, but I'm, I'm very slow right now. But I'm writing a lot right now. I don't know if that's the way with you, Kendara, but if I'm writing a lot, then I'm reading... Uh, my reading really slows down because a lot of that time that I dedicate to reading turns into writing time. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm probably embarrassingly reading like two to three books a month maybe right now. Oh geez, that's embarrassing for you. Come on. Well, I mean, that's I, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, sometimes it's probably less than that, but yeah, uh, probably that's two a, books oh. a month. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. I just told you I had a book on my shelf for a year. <laughs> you just said you were reading five at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but over the course of a year. <laughs> <laughs> Takes you that long, Kendara, to finish a book, or is it because you're yeah, so busy? I, well, when I really, if I have, if I'm reading for, you know, for blurbs or something, I do it fast because I, you know, people have deadlines that they need me to meet, but. When I'm reading for pleasure, I'm a saver. I savor. I savor the flavor. I like spend like you know so long on a page, and then I'll stop and think about it. And um, so, so that's how it goes. Like this month, I was reading a lot for blurbs, and I actually, I think I've read four or five books this month. But I'm not writing at all. Ha ha ha. So <laughs> I, that's that's like a huge, a huge month for me. Usually, no, I will not. Um, Really slow. I'm really slow. So the next one is, would you rather only read your top 20 favorite books over and over or always read new ones that you haven't read before? 
my top 20 over and over. That's an awful thing to say, I know. But uh, I am a creature of habit. I love going to my favorite restaurants over and over and ordering the same things over and over and <laughs> watching my favorite movies over and over. <laughs> I am. Uh, I do that, too. Do you, have, do you have, if I could just interject here for a second, do you have that one movie that you own it, but also whenever it's on cable and you just happen to pass by it, that you'll stop to. and watch wherever it is. What What is that movie for you? Ever After. Uh, I love Ever After. Ever After. Oh, man. That's good. Favorite movie. Um, any, any Star Wars movie, Lord of the Rings movie, or Jurassic Park. I will watch Jurassic Park whenever it is on. Ooh, so I'm guessing you're really excited for the new movie to come out? I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, of course, this is the first Jurassic Park. I don't, I don't watch the second or the third or the fifth or sixth. I don't know how many there are now. But um, the, the first one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty – this one looks good, though. It looks really good. Plus Chris Pratt, you know, and, I mean, yes. Oh my gosh. I did such a crush on him. Yeah, I mean, like, ever since Guardians of the Galaxy came out, I've had a total crush on him. I know, right? He won right. me over. Right, right. Maybe he'll take off his shirt <gasps> and on a motorcycle. Yes. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing that out there. Yes. You never know. <laughs> It'd be great. Oh my gosh. So, what about you, Kendara? Would you do only. Top 20 or not? I I mean, I love my top 20, but I guess I would do only new ones because I do the same thing as Kristen. I love ordering the same things over and over and watching the same movies over and over. But my retention's pretty good. So if I never got to read my favorite book again, I think I could still call up many of the emotions that I have with it. So I'm going to go with new books. All right. The next one is, would you rather be a librarian or a bookseller? Bookseller. Mm, yeah. Bookseller. Nice. All right, we only have two more. Don't worry, we're almost done. The next one is, would you rather only read your favorite genre or every genre except your favorite? <laughs> Only my favorite. <laughs> I think we've established I'm a creature of habit now. So <laughs> yeah. very true. Yeah, Only my favorite. I guess, yeah, I guess I would have to go with only my favorite then too. Yeah, definitely. And then the last one is: Would you rather only read physical books or e-books? If I had a choice, I'd I'd read physical books. Physical books. All right. So we have a few minutes left before this is over. It's gone by so fast. So one of my last questions is, do you have any advice for people who are aspiring to be writers? Go ahead. No, 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 go. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> My advice is not always really exciting advice, but I think I think the best thing to do is to to try to read a lot and to write a lot. Um, I I think there's there's so um, I I didn't like to think about. Let me start over. I didn't like to think about this when I was early in my writing career, but you have to write a lot in order to get better. You have to continue to practice. It's like running a race. You know, I mean, you, you start running. You're not going to have your best time on your first time out there. So you have to keep doing it and keep doing it and practicing and practicing um, in order to find your voice and find the kinds of things that you like to write about and to, you know, find what your style is like we were talking about um, or the things that you really don't like. Uh, and, and you don't know that unless you keep doing it. So... Um, I think it's really important to write a lot about a lot of things uh, in order to narrow that down. And to write a lot about yourself, too. Um, when I talk to kids in school, they a lot of their writing projects have to do with, you know, looking at things that they've done in the past and their experiences and 
and they want to write fiction and they want to write you know something exciting and different and, and I think that it's so important to write about yourself first because you get to know yourself first and then all those adventures can take off from there nice I like it. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> welcome. Yeah, like everything, everything that Kristen said is, you know, it's true and it's it's good advice. Um, the, I mean, the best writing advice when you think about just basic writing advice, that's that's the best. And it sounds, you know, kind of silly. Like, of course, well, if I want to be a writer, I should read. Of course, I I actually have to write. But I know so many aspiring writers who just get stuck. Like they start to overthink things before they're really, um, well, before they're really anywhere. I know a lot of writers who get the first chapter down and then they can't go any farther. You know, they start to psych themselves out. Um, they get worried that they're going to mess it up, so they don't really know which way the story should go. And just, you know, just putting it down on the page. You have to get it out there. That's what first drafts are for. First drafts are there for you to mess up on. Because if it stays up in your head, it's never going anywhere. At least, even if you get it out and it's a huge mess and it's just really stupid, you've got something to work with and you can put it together in different ways. So, getting it down, actually writing is, you know, that's my advice. Yeah. It's also really good advice. Thank you for your words of wisdom. Thank you. Yeah, many times. <laughs> All right, so what is the easiest? And the hardest part about writing a book. About writing what? Writing a book. Oh. Uh, there are lots of hard parts, I think. <laughs> um, there are lots of really easy and exciting parts, but I think there are, for me, there are an equal number of hard parts. Um, I love dreaming up the ideas. I love doing the research behind it. I love um, thinking about characters and where they came from and why they are the way they are and how to bring them together and mesh with other characters. Um, I love thinking about the conflicts and how they resolve those conflicts and change and how people change as a result of that. Um, and I love, you know, like running through a scene where it's all coming out right and everything is just, you know, flowing from the fingertips and it feels really good. Um, and then uh, I get stuck pretty regularly. <laughs> um, writer's block, I think, is for me, is a very natural part of my process. Um, I, uh, I do outline, but I, I sometimes... Uh, run myself right into brick walls regardless and that's always really hard for me to back up and realize I've written you know 10 15,000 words in the wrong direction and I need to oh, you know, yeah. rewind that all back to do it again uh, revising is not my favorite part <laughs> but it's a really necessary part obviously um, yeah I mean there's there's pros and cons on either side sometimes um, getting through not quite the middle but a little bit after the middle before the end is sort of a hard place for me. Um, I generally get tripped up there a lot. Can I ask, because um, I, I read The Glass Arrow which is Kristen's most recent release out in February. I read it so long ago. I've been waiting, it feels like I've been waiting for nine years for this book to come out. Yeah, you probably have been waiting for nine years I for it. <laughs> honestly, I've been, but I've been waiting even longer for Metal Town. Which is Metal Town is uh -oh. your book after this one, right? Is your is Metal Town up next, like next year? Okay, I'm so sorry. I I froze for a second and I missed your question. Oh, I was just gonna say, is Metal Town up next year? Is Metal Town 2016? Yes, Metal okay. Town is 2016. You have read that a as month? well. Um, Do you have a month? What's that? Do you have a month or is it? just 2016. It's not like December 2016. I think or... we're just saying 2016 at this point. I don't think it's been decided yet. But um, yeah, 2016. Uh, yeah, this is the story of some young sweatshop workers um, who are building parts of bombs uh, during a war and so there's obviously a lot of pressure for them to get the job done but they're working under these really horrible conditions so they join together to um, unionize against their boss and um, of course it's a love story and <laughs> obviously there's a big dance number at the end 
and uh, it's yeah, really... they, all, they all go West Side Story and do these yes. graphic novels all over the place. Mm, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> 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 the last and... <laughs> a graphic novel. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I I'm really I'm really excited about this one. I um I really I, love I, that story. I wish it was out already because I've been waiting so long for it. And yeah. there are so many questions that I want to ask you about that book, but nobody would care because they haven't gotten a chance to read it yet. So I'll ask about Glass Arrow. Like, what, um, uh, what was your favorite scene to write in the Glass Arrow? Because there are so many great scenes, you know, in in the auction house. Um, but then there are also the great scenes when she's after she's sold. Versus, did you enjoy writing the city more or the wilds more? Because there's such contrasting settings and contrasting tones. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I, I think I probably enjoyed writing the wild more just because Aya enjoyed the wild more. Um, Aya, the main character, she she was so much happier and more comfortable, um, and uh, and in her element. I mean, even when people are chasing her, she's um, you know she's got her weapons and she's stronger and she knows where to hide and how to fight and um, she was so trapped in the city and so it was really frustrating for her uh, and I think frustrating for me as a writer to be with her as she experienced that um, so yeah I definitely think in the wild um, that was more that was that was fun for me um, <clears throat> of course you asked about my favorite scenes my favorite scene is is one at the very end um, which you know, I can't reveal what happens, but you know, where she where she finally realizes that, um, and and her friend Daphne finally realized that you know, beauty is not determined by somebody else's standards. Beauty is determined by what's inside and our strength and our power that comes from inside. Um, so that was, you know, that coming together point, um, which is triggered by something in the story. That was really, that was really fun for me to write. Um, but yeah, when you ask that, I think of like the really sad parts and the parts where I cried writing. <laughs> there was, I mean, that was one of my favorite scenes to write too. Was uh, which was also like the worst scene ever to write was was a sad um, death of a character in that in the Glass Arrow. So I will forever love and hate that scene. <laughs> yeah, but so, you you have um, Ungodly out in September. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that is third in the anti goddess books. Yes, the third and the last. That's okay, the tell, the story, tell us the end of the story. All the spoilers. What happens? Yeah, all the spoilers. I'll, just, like, <laughs> lay it all down. I'll take five minutes and I'll just lay out all of the plot threads and then <laughs> everybody will know. There will be no more questions. It'll it'll just simplify everything. I think. Uh huh. Um, no, it it was it was a really fun book to write. I've always wanted to kind of tackle the idea of uh, like the first half of the sequence is, is like an homage to the Iliad yes. before, and then the second half was like an homage to the Odyssey so I wanted a lot of quests and a lot of um, you know mythical, mythological traveling so there are three different quests in Ungodly and I had fun writing each and every one um, I got to meet a lot of new gods that I wasn't sure if I was going to, to meet um, and actually, you know, have conversations with them and, and it was fun. There was a god that I didn't expect, um, Thanatos, the embodiment of death, the god of, the god of gentle death, he calls himself. Um, he, he ended up playing a, a, pretty, a pretty major role and he was a lot of fun to write about because, you know, he's like a hot serial killer, basically. Um, nice. So, yeah. Those are the yeah. Types of serial killers, the oh, hot ones. The hot ones. <laughs> the ones who are like, man, you got a nice pad. Yeah, that. So we have a question. Karen asks, do you have a favorite character that you have written? And there's actually, I can see that there's a few viewers. So viewers, go ahead and ask a question. We're way over, so are you guys okay with doing an hour instead of a half an hour? So that's 20 minutes? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So if you have any more questions, people, ask them, and they will answer. So, again, the first one from Karen is, do you have a favorite character that you have written? I'm interested to hear your answer. I, 
Do you have um, a favorite character? I, I have I have a couple. Uh, I really loved writing Aya in the Glass Arrow because she was um, she's really strong and uh, resilient, and she's she's stuck in a bad situation. She's gonna fight her way out of it, come hell or high water. Um, I really loved writing that. I loved writing Kieran uh, in that same story because he's in this world that's very misogynistic. He's uh, very kind and compassionate toward women. <clears throat> And so that was fun, um, and I, of course, I love writing. I loved writing Chase in the Article Five series. He will forever be my, my one great love. <laughs> How about so, you? He was so noble. Like he was so yes, noble and he was so, so capable. How could he not be a favorite? Yeah, but super sexy. Actually, I my him. favorite character of yours that you've written is um, is once again in Metal Town. So I can't even say. <gasps> oh, no. I think I know. Yeah, I wasn't gonna say it's her, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I wasn't gonna say her either, but I, I do, I oh, love. Oh, she's so one. great. She's great. You guys are gonna love it in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, favorite character that I've written, I, I don't know. You know, you get to know them so well, and they, they feel like real people to you, and they've got lives. Um, obviously, I feel very close to Kaz because I spent so much time directly in his head that I get irritated that he's not telling me what he's up to now anymore. Like it's it's annoying. I'm like, where are you? What are you doing? And he just yeah. doesn't answer me and he's a little brat. Um I I love writing the gods because they are all so self indulgent and full of themselves and sort of ridiculous in their own ways. I love writing Hermes because he's just full of the Dickens. Like I love characters who are full of the Dickens. I do. I love it when they just, you know, go off rails and are crazy and wild and don't do what, what I ask of them. So, Hermes and Kaz are two of my favorites. But, but what about Odysseus? Well, you know, actually, I was never a fan of Odysseus in the Odyssey. I thought he was kind of a dick. He did. So, yeah. But I knew, I, the thing that I loved about him was the connection to Athena. So... I got to write up, you know, their connection, and of course, he is such the swashbuckling hero that, yeah, I can see that he's, you know, hot. I understand why she would be attracted to him, but would I hang out with him for a long period of time? I don't know. Maybe not. You know. Well, I love it when you write about him. <laughs> <laughs> we know. We all know Kristen's favorite character now. Of I have to I have the type. <laughs> and I love Cass, too. Oh, my gosh, I love her. And I loved Anna. Oh, she just broke my heart. I mean, at the end of, um, oh, oh, my gosh. I mean, I don't want to, if, if nobody's read the Anna Dressed in Blood series, you need to read that because it's just so wonderful. But, oh, heartbroken, heartbroken. <laughs> oh, it's so, and, and not in, like, this really sad way, but in this really, like, moving and powerful way. And um, it was just really, it's really beautiful. Oh. It's really beautiful. I miss her, too. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ever thinking of going back into the Anna Dressed in Blood series? Um, that's probably the most asked question that I get. And, yeah, of course, I'm always thinking about that because I'm always thinking about, what uh, you know, what he's up to, and and if there's another story to tell, and if he ever tells me there is, I'm going to tell it. Of course, I will. Um, I couldn't not. But for now, no. I've got um, another series, Three Dark Crowns, coming up in 2016. So uh, we can always hope to see him at the movies. Yeah. Yes, we can hope to see him. At That's the right. <laughs> okay. Brings up a really good question. So, what's going on with the Anna Dressed in Blood movie? What are some updates from last Everything. time? Yeah, that's a great question. And there are cool things. There are really, really cool things that, of course, I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> I have, I'm like, Darn I'm, it. A, I'm under a strict gag order. I'm. I was not even supposed to tell my husband. I. I had to get clearance to tell him. So I. I can't say anything. But it's. It's. You know. It's still moving and it's. It looks really cool, so I have all fingers crossed that it will actually come to pass because I would love to see it. Well, is there are there writers right now? Is there like how far along are you not allowed to say? 
I'm not allowed to say anything. Um, Ficklefish Films is, you know, they've got it all in hand and they've got people involved. It's, it's looking really cool. Uh, so, yeah. But I can't, I, I, wish, I, could. Is, I wish I could just grab everything, but I can't. But it is officially going to happen, right? This isn't, like, no. it's a thing? No, no. no. It, it's considered in development. And you know when a movie's in development, um, any number of things could happen to it. Up until really, like, up until production is wrapped, you hear about films being shut down for this or that reason. You know, a star breaks the leg, or um, they have to go to rehab, or, you know, the money falls through. So until it's, you know, in the can and there's a release date and everything, I would never say that it's, it's a sure thing, but it still looks, it looks pretty good. So we have another question from Karen, and the question is, Kristen, do you think Selma will ever regret her choice? <clears throat> um, okay, so Selma is a, char um, a character in the Glass Arrow. Uh, it's Aya, the main character's um, cousin, and she um, she makes the decision to go to the city uh, of her own free will. I, um, I I think that she will always regret it a little bit, but not enough to act on it. Um, I th I think that it will be one of those situations where she, you know, she kind of wishes that she was a different kind of person, the kind of person that could hack it um, out, you know, in the mountains as a free woman, and uh, kind of knows that that she can't, and she. I think there's a strength in that too, is understanding her limits, and and her limit was that she was not going to be able to survive out there and do what she needed to to take care of the family. Um, so yeah, I think in a little bit, it's it's more of regret of of the things that she can't do versus the decision that she made. Because it's a hard life in both places. You yeah, know, the world of the glass arrow. It isn't easy on free women, and it isn't easy on you know property women. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, Aya loved the wild, and she was really good out there, but I can so understand that, you know, finding the right bark isn't for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, but that's a good question. Thank you, Karen. Yes, thank you, Karen. So another question I have is which actor or actress would you like to see playing the lead character from your most recent book? Um, I'm totally spacing on her name right now. Uh, but I would love to see the girl um, from Glee um, who played Santana. I would Ooh. love to see her play Aya. She is fierce. She is fierce? Yeah, and, fierce. Um, I mean, she kind of looks like I imagine look, Aya looking. Um, you know, and I, I, I can see her punching a hole through a wall. I can see it. I like it. I know she. I know she's capable of it. <laughs> I can see that too. So I mean, she kind of does. Me, Anna, call me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she. She's really good at being like badass. Yeah, she is. She's tough. She's awesome. I love her. Do you have a choice for your male, Deanne? Oh, um, um, also, I'm spacing on the name right now, um, but I, I loved the guy that was in The Maze Runner. What was his name? Oh, crap. I can't think of his name either. He was super cute. And he had a lot of good facial expressions, which I think you would need in um, to be in the Glass Arrow because Kieran can't talk. So uh, you need somebody who's going to be very expressive in other ways. Um, and so I, I would love to see him as Kieran. Who do you got? Um, oh, well, okay. So the Goddess War has, I guess, two two female leads: Athena and Cassandra. Um, Athena is kind of tricky because she's a goddess, so she's timeless and she's thousands of years old, but she also looks like she's about 21-ish. I really like Summer Glau from Firefly. 
she was she was you know uh, River in Firefly, and also I really liked her when she played Cameron the Terminator in the Sarah Connor Chronicles. That's that's kind of fun because uh, um, well I don't know she's just really fun. I don't know she has that young kind of ageless face too. So maybe she could get away with playing. She can probably get away with playing 26 forever. Um, Cassandra, I don't know. And what, Odysseus or Hermes? I have no idea. Um, Jon Snow is pretty cute. Um, yes. Uh, you know, like, yeah. Like, he also fits my tap. Five years ago, he was, he was pretty cute. Now he's kind of older, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next question is, where does your inspiration? Co Actually, no. Let's not have that question. I have a person. You guys have been talking about your other's books. You know them very well. Are you guys be beta reader beta readers to each other? Um, Kendara has read, like she said, she's read um, early drafts of my books. Um, I mean, she said nine years ago, but it probably was at least two. Oh, at least two. Yeah. That you read Glass Arrow. I mean, it's been a while. It's been a while since she read that. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It, it, it's been at least two because I remember um, my husband stole the iPad and he started reading Metal Town um, when we were on a cruise ship with my parents. And I just remember him going like, this is really good. What is it? And I said, what are you reading? You're not supposed to be reading that. That's mine! <laughs> yeah, I had to pry it away, and he had to go back to reading World War Z. So, yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that was at least two years ago, like two and a half years ago. But, I, yeah, so we're not exactly beta readers, but I know if, you know, if, if I ever need a need a set of eyes and, like, a fresh pair of eyes, you know, Kristen has some great, you know, great sensibilities. And I love her work, so anytime she wants to send me anything, I'm like, yeah, 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 gimme, give gimme. Give and she's yeah. like, it's not done. I'm like, I don't care. I don't yeah. care. Just tell me the first third and then tell me what happened. Yeah, so. yeah. And she's had some really good, she's had some really good feedback for me, too, on my books. Nice. So you guys kind of like critique partners a little bit? Yeah, I mean, not formally, but, um, but yeah, we've read each other's early stuff and, and offered thoughts. And usually it's flailing. Ah, it's so good! Ah! <laughs> it's just like an eight-page-long eight email, of, and then this part, and then yeah. this part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What you need? I mean, that's, you know, it's still useful to hear that stuff, yeah. I hope. It actually is. It's really useful, actually, to know the parts that people like when they read it, because, um, it could be a part that you're really insecure about as a writer. You know, you didn't, you didn't really feel like maybe it came across right, or maybe you really like it, but you're not sure if it's going to read that way to anybody else. Um, or, you know, if you're getting to a point where you're looking at, you have to chop some stuff, you know, if somebody really likes that scene, you're going to think twice about <laughs> cutting it. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, it, it's really helpful to know what somebody else likes when they read something. Very nice. So... I have a I have a question. Kandara and I were talking about switching publishers and kind of what that entails. Mm -hmm. um, you were kind of talking about it, Kandara, but I think other people would like to know because you're going from Ma Macmillan, which did Anna Justin Blood, to Harper Collins, which is your brand new series. So, what goes into switching publishing houses? Um. Well, it's it's. It's really very similar to what happens when you sell your first book. Um, you you submit to a number of different publishing houses with your agent, and then you know you, you get to talking with you know some editors, and hopefully one of them really likes what you're doing, or maybe a bunch of them really like what you're doing, and then they do their editorial thing and take it to you know acquisitions, and hopefully you get an offer. And it, it just worked out that um, that Harper Teen, an editor at Harper Teen, Alexandra Cooper, really liked Three Dark Browns and um, decided to pick it up. So. You got, I think I read at Publishers Week, uh, Weekly or something, you got a really kick-ass deal with them. 
So when that happened, what were your thoughts? I think I read like just a, a lot of money went into <laughs> that series. Uh, so what was your thoughts? Well, it was uh, it. There's there's a lot of you know things that go into it, and it's really a lot of um, mostly it was just relief that because it, it went to auction. Um, so it had a couple of, of publishers were interested, and it was just relief. Like, oh, thank Mother of Pearl. It's not so horrible that people are, like, you know, like, burning it and sending me to ashes. Um, somebody actually thought, it's, it's okay. It's not crap. It's, it's okay. It might be crap, but it's okay. They think they can work with it. Um, so... So that it was just relief. My agent called and she said, "Okay, we've got this, 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 this interest, and we're gonna go and we're gonna do the auction on. I can't remember what day it was, but I was getting an oil change at Walmart, and <laughs> that's when you know she called and I'd been having horrible nightmares about her just emailing me cat posters. Like it was supposed to be like updates, and you know, updates, and I'd open it and it'd just be like a cat poster. You know, the one where the cat's like hanging and she's like, "Hang in there, baby. Like, yeah. What are you doing to me? Why are you sending me this?" Mm -hmm. So it was it was really surreal. And then of course, you know, I, I had to wait for the auction, and I just started thinking, "Okay, this auction's gonna fall through over the weekend. Everybody's gonna realize that it's crap, and you know, they're they're gonna it's gonna be a joke auction. They're all gonna offer me, you know, five fish and a rat." Um, and I'll I'll take it. Um, so yeah, I mean it was <laughs> I was a basket case. <laughs> Even remembering it now, I'm kind of turning into a basket case as we speak. But yeah. So yeah. did you sell the? Did you write it, or was it an idea that was sold? It was my first time selling on proposal, so um, I had I believe 50 pages and a synopsis. And if, as a writer, uh, Kristen, have you have you done a lot of synopses? I think. Uh, I'm I'm really awful at writing a synopsis. Um, they're my, horrible. They're horrible yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah, they're really. I think um, I I think Scott Westerfeld recent. I was recently talking to him about um, short stories versus long stories, and his his answer, which I thought was the best answer I'd ever heard, was. I have big fingers. I can't write short stories. <laughs> and, and I think there, there's just like there's an art to it. There's an art to writing short stories. There's an art to writing a synopsis. And it's a skill set. And and some people are really talented at writing long stories. Like Kandara is really talented at writing the long story and the series and the you know the um, the sweeping epic characters and things like that. Um, and and yeah, it's it's harder to condense that stuff. So I I, I feel you. It's hard. And. Um... Yeah, and I I tend to be more of a less of a plotter and more of a pantser. So when I write it's a synopsis, really I just want to like interject whenever anybody's reading it and just be like, that's not really gonna happen, you know? Like yeah. I'm saying it's gonna happen. It's not what's gonna happen. I have yeah. no idea what's gonna happen. So <laughs> that might not even be your name. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> it might not even be that many books. Maybe yeah. I'll just finish it off at one. Sorry. Right. Okay, so that closes our interview. Thank you so much, ladies. Yeah, but it is not sure. over just yet because Kendara and Kristen are super duper nice and are giving away their books. Kendara is giving away two copies of Mortal Gods and Kristen is giving away The Glass Arrow. And this is for USA only and they're signed. Um, so what you have to do in order to um, uh, win is this live chat is going to become a YouTube video and when it's a YouTube video I want you to comment that video with a way to contact you um, so if you win it can you know I have a way to say you won it can be an email it can be Twitter it can be anything and um, that's that's literally all you have to do is just comment so nothing to it um, again this is USA only um, and that is it. So thank you so much, Kendara, and thank you so much, Kristen. This was a lot of fun, and yeah, I you. hope to talk with you again in the future. Yeah, me too.
All right. Bye. All right. Bye, you guys. Thank you.